All right, today I have a really exciting video for you. It's going to go over the calibration tool in Lightroom in the editing panel. It's one that I've been wanting to do, a video that I've been wanting to do for a little bit, but I wanted to make sure that I understood enough of the tool to be able to share vital and useful, mainly useful information to you. So without further ado, let's get started. Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. First, I want to thank each and every one of you who are here every single week at 7 p.m. on Monday. I I see you. I see you. And I and I truly appreciate you guys being here every week and supporting this channel. So thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for watching all of these videos. And so you guys who are new, my name is Will Simpson. I do videos like this every Monday at 7 p.m. It'd be great to have you along. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, Today we are going to get into camera calibration. So what does calibration mean? Well, calibration means to adjust or change in order to make standard or to compare with something else. So in this case, we're doing photos. So camera calibration in Lightroom would be adjusting the colors and the way the colors behave in order to work to your style or work to the colors that you see. Here's an example, if you had 25 different colors of blue that someone said, these are my 25 closest to blue colors. And you gave these 25 colors individually to 10 different people. And you said, pick what color blue you think is the bluest. Well, most likely each person would pick a slightly different shade of blue because we all see slightly different shades or colors and stuff like that. We could probably pick fairly close and they'd all be very, very similar, but each one would probably be slightly different. So that's kind of your example of cameras. You have a Sony, you have a Nikon, you have a Fuji, you have a Canon, you have all of these different cameras and you have people deciding, well, this is true blue, this is true red, and this is true green but then you have someone over at maybe Fuji and says, well, this is true blue, this is true red, and this is true green, and so on and so forth for all the other cameras. They might be slightly different. So when a camera takes a picture, then the colors recorded are slightly different to each one. And that's where the camera calibration in Lightroom comes in handy. It allows you to adjust the colors so you, they're more to what you yourself picture or you yourself want to see. Now, before we get into Lightroom, let's take a quick example. If you're sitting in your car and you're listening to music, you know how you can adjust the bass, the treble, and the mid, the EQ of the sound? Well. That's kind of the same thing. You're adjusting your bass, your treble, and your mid, your reds, your greens, your blues, to get exactly what you want. Now, you can adjust your, your car stereo to the style of the music, so it's, it fits what you think it should sound like, or you can adjust it to a particular style. For example, if you're listening to some, some type of music and you want that bass really pumping, just really, really pumping, you crank that bass up to plus 10, well, that might not be what the music was designed for, but hey, if that's your style, then go for it. I used to do that. Oh my God, I would crank that bass up. And... We're past that time now, but... I used to, but that's the same thing with calibration. You can calibrate your photos to be naturally colored, or you can use the calibration to create a really cool style to your photos. And we'll get into that a little bit later. I just wanted to show you the differences there that you have two different options here. So let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom and see what this tool is all about. Now, the first thing to understand is colors. Every single color that your camera records contains red, greens, and blues. These are your main colors that compose every single pixel. So in a blue, you're gonna have a little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. In a magenta, you're gonna have a little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, and so on and so forth. Every single pixel, every single color will contain RGB red, greens, and blues. So on the right side here, you have your panel. You have basic, tone curve, HSL, so on and so forth. And then at the bottom, you have calibration. Now, if you don't see calibration, go ahead and right click on one of them and you'll see customize develop panel. Click that and then you can customize it. You can also move. So if you click these three lines, you can slide it up here. You can move it down. If you don't want a certain panel, like let's say you don't wanna use effects, then just uncheck it and press save. However, if you don't see calibration, if it's unchecked, just check it and press save and it should appear right there. Now go ahead and hit the arrow 
And what this is gonna give you is very simple seven sliders. I mean, super simple. It's amazing that these seven sliders affect so much. But again, you see reds, greens, blues. We'll start with the top slider, and this is shadows. This simply adjusts the tint of your photos. You notice when you take a picture, and sometimes it's kind of shaded green or shaded red, this is your tint, and this is where you can color correct that. Simply sliding it left to the green or right to the magenta adjusts that. Now, as it's, you'll notice, it's not adjusting anything in this image because there's no real shadows there. But if we were to go, but, <laughs> but if we were to go to say this image here, this image here looks green. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, it's mainly green, so it looks green. So if we were to slide this slider all the way to the right, you see how it tints magenta in primarily the shadows. If we go all the way to the left, it tends green, primarily in the shadows. But this is for color correcting. So you can go, again, you can do it for color correcting or you can do it for massive uh, stylistic look. So in this case, I would just wanna shade it a little bit to the right to add a little bit of more magenta and kind of calm down the colors a little, make it a little bit more natural. It also increases a little bit of contrast as well. That's a simple slider, that's all there is to it. So let's go back to our color wheel and let's start with the red primary slider. Now you'll notice you have hue and saturation for each one. One thing that you need to understand about the difference here, the difference between this, the calibration, and your HSL. The difference between these is this, let's say you go to hue or saturation of reds, greens, and blues. These are adjusting the reds, period, the greens, period, and the blues, period. Remember, the calibration adjusts the RGB, the whole, whole of reds, greens, and blues. The saturation adjusts reds. So if I take the saturation out of red, what happens to the color wheel? All the red disappears. But if I take the saturation out of the reds in the red primary in the calibration, notice how the reds, almost the entire image fades in saturation. That's because remember, each pixel contains reds. Each pixel contains greens and blues. So when you're adjusting the RGB, the calibration, you're actually adjusting every single pixel in the image. Now this is the, that is super important to understand when you're adjusting this. So let's go ahead and reset that by double clicking on the slider. Now, let me make sure red's there. Okay, good, let's give you another example. If I adjust the red slider in the HSL to red, it becomes really red, right? Doesn't adjust anything else. Let's reset that. But if I adjust the red slider in the calibration, it adjusts everything else. Notice how everything kind of changed tones a little bit. So back to the red primary hue slider. If you go to the left, you're pushing every red pixel more red. If you push it to the right, you're pushing every red pixel more orange. Now remember, I'm gonna say red, green, and blue pixels. Remember, I'm referring to all of the color in the entire image that contains the red, green, blue. It's just make it simpler so it's easier for me to say. So if I slide this, this slider right, everything gets a little bit more orange. Notice how the reds become pure orange, and then the magentas over here become kind of purpley. The yellows become kind of orange yellow. The greens kind of dull down. So let's do the green. So the green hue, if you slide it left, goes more towards the yellowy brown look, yellowy. And if you go to the right, it turns more green, more pure green. So I go left. Everything kind of gets a little bit yellowier. See the greens get more yellow, more, uh, more vibrant green and, or sorry, a more vibrant greenish yellow rather than just a clear cut green. If we go right, everything gets very, very green. And notice it kind of becomes a little bit of a pastel-y color. So that's something to remember when you're doing your editing. It's a really good, really good style there. And then we're gonna go down to the blue primary. If we go left, we're gonna go towards the teals and oranges. Again, a great style. And if we go right, we're gonna get to the purples. We're gonna add so much blue that everything's gonna become purple. And honestly, just starting from the beginning of this video, I have never gone to the right <laughs> on the blue hue slider. Anyways, that gives you a look of what the sliders do. So now let's go into our other color wheel example. My file could not be found. Well, that's rude. Why can't it be found? Where did it go? Okay, let me find it first. Okay, so that photo for some reason isn't working, so we're gonna do the examples here. So if you go here to the YY, 
we're gonna go cycle through these here. Okay, we have so we have before on the left and we have after on the right. Now, if you go up to the histogram and you kind of scroll over these colors, notice in the histogram it says your reds, greens, and blues, but there's a slash in between them. This shows your reds on the left, your before, and your reds on the right, the after, so you can see the changes. So let's go down here to the red slider and slide it over. Notice how things become kind of pinkish, kind of magenta-y. And let's hover over the red. In this spot on the before, the reds contain 75, greens 34, and blues 30, 13. But on the after, there are no greens, the reds are the same and there's more blue. So that means it pulled all the greens out and it added blue to the red. So it became more of a magenta y color. Now, if we go ahead and reset that, let's do the other way. Uh, let's highlight it over. Now we've made everything more orange. So if you look, the reds are the same, but it's added more greens and it's taken all the blues out. So now you've taken red and green, you've created more of an orange color. And this happens throughout the entire image. So if we go over here to the blues, the teals, you'll see that the reds are the same, 70.2 both ways. The, the greens, it's taken a little bit of green out and it's added a little bit of blue. So not much of a difference, but it's changed it a little bit. Come over here to the green here and it's added a little bit of red. It's taken away a little bit of green and it's taken out a lot of blue. So you can see it's affecting the entire image. Let's go ahead and reset that, come down to the blue primary, slide it over to the left, that teal orange look and you notice a big difference. So the reds, it's taken, it's added a little bit of red, it's removed some of the green, and it's kept the blue the same. So that kind of shows you what is occurring when you're adjusting these images. You're adjusting all of the colors as a whole. So now that we understand what it is doing and how it's affecting and that it's affecting your entire image, let's go here to our first example. We're gonna go into this sunset here, the sunset beach photo. And just so you know, I've done lens correction and I've done basic color edits. Here's the before, here's the before, and here's the after. So I've just brightened it up a little. I've kind of touched it up. So we're gonna see what we can do to fix it. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna warm the image up a little because it was really nice. And I, there's a little bit of a green cast. So we're gonna up the magenta just a shade. Not much, just a shade. Then let's go into the calibration. Now, again, like I said, there's a little bit of a green shade, so let's go ahead and up the magenta here. If we up it really hardcore, it actually kind of works. So we're just gonna up it though to plus 20. Now with this image, it's very blue and orange. So what does that immediately make you think? Teal and orange. It is a very, very common, one of the most popular, if not the most popular stylistic ways to edit your photos and videos. Uh, movies use it all the time, photos. I mean, it's just, some people just take this slider and crank it all the way to the left, boom, done. Photo done. But that is quite a bit of an overkill for me. So in this case, we could lower the saturation, right? But that's still, then now it looks kind of dull. You could come up here now to HSL and adjust the saturation of those individual colors. So take out some of the orange, but then again, it looks a little dull. We're just gonna simply adjust this so it's not as much. So we're gonna adjust it until I like it. That's not bad. That I can work with. A few more edits and it'll look good. Now a little tip, you can adjust the other sliders and kind of balance it out. And you just kind of have to play with them and really see what they're gonna do. This doesn't look good, this doesn't look good, this doesn't look good, and this doesn't look good. So I don't actually like any of that. So I'm not gonna adjust any of those and I'm gonna be done with this on the calibration. So just with that, before, after, before, after just a simple quick tweaks and we have a little bit more of a stylistic edit obviously i'm not done with this photo and i would edit it more to kind of balance everything just showing you where i would start all right next image again this is all i've done is the basic edit here's the before here's the after just to kind of bring back some life to it and with this one again it has a green cast so we're going to move this over to the magenta until we kind of Touch base and see where I like it. Let's see, all the way in, I don't know. We're gonna go to about 50. And then what I wanna do is adjust the skin tones. Now a super great way to adjust skin tones and make them look really good is in the calibration. And here's a little tip that I learned. If you take the green saturation and all the way up and then lower the red saturation just a little bit and then the blue saturation about halfway, you get really nice skin tones. Now this isn't a blanket edit, but it is a place to start and it could be 
a good place for you to get those skin tones balanced. So let's zoom in here and let's look at the before. Very it kind of faded, washed out, and after. A much, much nicer, smoother look. So that, just by doing that, I fixed the skin tones. And then you can then go and edit the rest of the photo, but you're starting off with good skin tones. So that's important. So let's go to the next image here. Again, basic edit before, after. With this one, I think we're gonna make this a stylistic edit. We're gonna make it green. So we're gonna crank the greens up and notice how this is really important. Notice how the greens really pop. The greens and yellows just really stand out. So this is before kind of faded and the yellows are kind of dull. This is after. The yellows have a lot of lot of punch and the greens stand out beside and they just look really good together. So that alone was great. It made all these leaves stand out and the greens stand out just by adding one change. So then what we're gonna do is make this a little bit more of a muted color, kind of a faded color. So we're gonna turn the red slider this way, kind of turn the greens into real, really green. And then we're gonna lower the red saturation dull them down, actually not that much, because again, we have skin tones, so we wanna adjust those. And then the blue saturation, we're just gonna raise it a little as well, and then we're gonna drop this down just a shade to get that blue and teal added. Not too much, though. Okay, good. So that, just doing those adjustments, got my colors where I wanted them. I'm a little red, but I could adjust that in the HSL alone, but before, after. Notice there's just more vibrance, there's more pop to the image. The one thing to note is your calibration, again, you can do it as a style edit or you can do it as your base edit where you start with the calibration, get your colors set how you want and then edit the photo. Or you can edit the photo and then adjust your calibration to put a style on it. It's totally up to you where you adjust the calibration. I kind of jump around, I'll do the calibration in the beginning, and the end, in the middle, make little tweaks here and there, but it does get me uh, to that style that I really, really like. Okay, let's go on to the next image here, and we're gonna go on to this really pretty image with the background, and again, this one has very yellow. You see the yellow, it's, it's, it's no good. So we're gonna adjust that here. So if it's yellow, what do we need to do? We need to change the, the skin tone. So we're gonna up the greens, saturation all the way, that looks, terrible, just awful. So we're gonna fix that by lowering the saturation in the reds, just a little bit, and the blues, quite a bit. And that is looking better. Okay, not quite there, oops. So we got before and after. So that looks a little bit better, but we're still not there. We're gonna up the greens hue a little bit. Yeah, that looks nicer. And then we're going to lower the blue a little bit. There we go. Get that auburn, that little fiery color there. That looks so much better. So let's look at the before and the after. It just takes away that little bit of yellow tint and makes the image pop. Like even right there, the subject is popping off the screen just a little bit more. It's not much, but the calibration is not meant to make large changes. Unless again, you do, you slam the slider to the left or right, you're not gonna get big changes, but that's not what you want. What you want is to make subtle tweaks to make the image stand out more and be colored the way you want more. So in the end, the calibration tool is super, super powerful and can really make huge changes and differences to your images. You can really make them stand out and really, really make them glow. But it requires practice, it requires playing with them, pushing it too far, pushing it too little, and just really figuring out what it does and how it affects images. Again, every image is different and every camera that sees color sees it slightly different. So your edits, your changes might be slightly different than what I'm doing, but it's just a matter of learning what they do. However, I highly recommend learning to use the calibration tool, whether in the beginning or in the end, it doesn't matter. Learn to use it because it will make your photos that much punchier and that much stronger. It makes a huge difference. So with that, we wrap up this video. I hope you learned some things. And if you have any questions, I know it was a lot of information. Feel free to comment below and let me know. Otherwise, subscribe if you haven't already. I do videos like this every Monday at 7 p.m. Go ahead and like the video if you liked it. And that's it. I feel calibrated. I hope you feel calibrated. I'll see you guys next Monday. I wanna thank all of you guys coming back every single week to watch my videos. I see you. I see you and I really, really, truly 
really, uh, truly, really, really, truly, really, really, truly appreciate. 